So, hello. <laughs> um, we're a small little group this morning. I don't know if something, something might have gone wrong with the link or um, there's quite a lot of us on Monday um, for to talk about the astrology of this Venus moon gate. So the Venus moon gate is today and it's the sixth gate that the Venus has been through in this journey. So we're kind of deep into the underworld now. And um, uh, and she tests us, really. Venus tests us as we go through these gates. Um, I think almost everyone I've had a confrontation with death in some way. So, um, you know, it's about owning the parts of ourselves that we tend to have kind of pushed aside or rejected. So it's interesting, our gateway today is greed, and it's the sacral chakra. Um, so I was thinking more subtly about greed, because it's like greed for food, there's greed maybe for sex as well, greed for love. Um, but I think pro probably like where we are in our process, where the greed gets us is, is the survival worry. Mm -hmm. So um, this is how I kind of feel it. Like something happens, you might not have enough money or, um, you know, there's just this kind of feeling of acting from a place of survival inside yourself. And that the survival energy tends to make us more closed and more constricted. And then the, the gift of this 54 is this um, aspiration. So almost like in aspiration, everything opens up. It's a much like more expansive, bigger feeling. Um, and... I've just been rereading it today, and a lot of it is about greed being very kind of um, on the physical level, and aspiration is like you you start to perceive the spiritual benefit or the spiritual way forward um, that kind of makes you behave or perceive what's going on in a different way. So that's sort of what I'm getting from the 54 right now. Um and we're going to do some neurographic art on that in a bit. But I'm going to invite Patricia <laughs> to say something about the sacral and maybe how you experience this 54. Be interesting. Yes. Uh, thank you, Alison. Um, it was interesting this morning. Uh, we're going to do the art. So I had to get my art things out. And one of the buckets of pens fell in the corner so I had to move my massage table and get them and on the floor behind it was my father's picture and also uh, a ship in a bottle which was interesting how I always relate that to him so I'm feeling that um, I'm going to be working with the healing with my father and his relationship with the second chakra center which goes all the way back into my um, zero to seven childhood uh, my SQ. So I am very grateful for that message to work with that healing through this moon gate. So the other thing, um, the 54.4 today, um, I remember in the dream arc that that's the um, collective ascension. This was the bird that came in the dream arc, which was the sky lark when the dream arc started. So that came up in my mind today too um just to uh mention that because i really feel this is ascension and this is really very strong now for the collective ascension to wash out the greed you know aspiration and ascend um i had another um thing happen this morning i woke up and I have a big flagpole in front of my house, which my animal totem, King Arthur, sits on. The flag was totally on the ground. 
the wind was so intense yesterday. There was a purification through the wind. We had the asteroid come through with the purification of the fire. We've had the wind today and my flag was on the ground. So I looked at it as purifying and I'm getting this, the, our country and the world was my message, you know, and this was all along the river with the waters. But anyway, um, today I'm going to talk about the chakra, the second chakra. And, uh, oops, brought my, my notes. <laughs> so the second chakra is located in the abdomen, abdomen, the center of our feelings and creativity. Through this chakra, we begin to understand our reactions to our inner and outer worlds and decide how we are going to express um, these feelings. So it's all about our feelings. It's all our womb chakra. It's our soul chakra. And um, it's particularly important for women where we store most of our energy, where we recreate. It's, you know, um, the sexual energy, the tantra yoga and um it it links to the intestines the abdominal organs and the reproductive so the sense is the taste of the five senses of our body the color is orange and the celestial body is the moon and that just makes sense too reproductive moon femininity woman you know it's it's uh, a yin chakra and um the gemstone is coral because coral is orange like fire agate and the animals are sea creatures like the fish the dolphins those things within the water because this is a water um, chakra of element. So I thought this was interesting too, was the deities that relate to the second chakra, Varuna. So when I looked up Varuna, also Vishnu, uh, Poseidon, makes sense. Poseidon, you know, the um, sea god. But when I looked up Varuna, it's the lordship, king of water, and it's protection over the rivers and all bodies of water. And it was the west direction. Now, we just had all this water and flooding in Southern California. And um, I thought that was something to look at. Well, maybe Allison, you know, where Varuna as an asteroid is in our charts, too. But relating to this water and we're having all this flooding. So um, the vowel sound is ooh, like in do, like ooh, to chant ooh. And the element being water. So how we release water from our body also um, is through crying and tears. And when we're, our hearts are broken, you know, we have, um, we cry, Be maybe mostly because of relationships. And that's, you know, so important with the chakra is re relating to one another. Um, so, okay, so I did mention that. Um, it's the source of our feelings, our creative energy, our birthing, our gestation activity, like how we nurture our business if we don't have a child it's just the creation of whatever who whatever we are in our feelings um physical communication as crying screaming laughing to express our feelings however we need to express them is uh, a physical communication of the chakra the psychic communication of it is known a feeling empathy now, I just thought this was amazing that we just went through, uh, was it the prior gene key? Was empathy we were doing? Okay. So we're still, you know, we've went through that on a psychic level and to raise that 
empathy and the ability to experience our own or another person's feeling for the purpose of understanding and clearing the self-destructive beliefs. So to have better relationships. Um, the intuitive communication style of this chakra uses feelings like empathy to learn a soul lesson or to help integrate the soul more fully in our body. It could involve experiencing the feelings of someone we hurt or actually experience our own feelings as it more fully integrates in our body. So problems um, in the body can relate to like colitis, disorders, kidney problems, childhood issues, fertility with women, PMS, uh, codependence, and just creative blocks in our life. So, um, so it contains all the feelings of ourself towards others and, and just how we relate. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share, um, okay. Yeah. So the acu, I'm a certified shiatsu therapist, so I've studied all the acupuncture points and, the point for this 54.4 gene key uh, uh, is on an emotional protector line of the body. So it's called the heart protector, heart constrictor, heart protector. Very, I mean, that says it all. Protect your heart from emotionals, emotions behind us. And it starts uh, in the breast area. Maybe I can, in the breast area, right? The side of the breast to the nipple. And then this is the first point on that line. And then it runs down our arm and goes out this finger, the, oops, <laughs> this finger. So the point, the actual point for activating um, this gene key 50.4 is on the heart line, not the heart meridian line, but the heart protector. And it's actually almost like three fingers up our arm in between the tendons and pushing down and holding that. And um, it's in this, the center of the forearm. This is the forearm. So it helps clear grief, loss, and it also is helpful for menstruation, um, problems with women. Anytime you feel emotional, that line is very, very, um, important to address like e EFT, you do the tapping, this is the holding. Holding down, pushing down on the point. You can go into uh, the actual hand. With this point directly is about three fingers from the wrist, center between the two tendons and holding. And I actually, when I do that, I can feel the energy going out my fingers. I can feel it. So you're just holding it, pushing it down. And when you feel, you can you can feel the chi coming out your fingers. So you do it with a relaxing breath and closing your eyes. Either arm, both arms have the same um, energy flowing through that. So it's about letting go and receiving with this, this point. So uh, I wanted to... Um, Let's see. Oops. I dropped my... I wanted to talk a little bit, you know, share with the violet flame and the soul chakra. And... Um, I had a strong violet flame thing in the... Um, was it this morning? It might even have been in a dream. I had a really powerful... Oh. Oh, I know where it was. It was when I was with Adam in our in our ceremony earlier by the sea, this huge like violet flame came. So anyway, back oh, beautiful to because there you are together, which is two, which is the relationship and um, the love between and then the violet flame coming in St. Germain. That's beautiful. So um, the seat of the soul, the soul chakra, uh, freedom, mercy, forgiveness, justice, alchemy, 
intuition, prophecy, and the forgiveness, I think, is so good at this time also because we all had relationships where we, you know, have to forgive others, even though may they have not maybe known what they done was right, but we have experiences or what we have done to others ourselves. So uh, the lack of forgiveness would be an unbalanced expression through this soul chakra. So um, through the second energy center, the seat of the soul chakra, we experience freedom, the freedom to become all that we meant to be. The ancients saw the seat of the soul as the real power point, the central focus of chi, the inner energy essential to, man, to man, maintenance of our life. Our soul is wise and can give us much inner direction. So that's, you know, brings in that femininity, that intuition, energy, and um, it can recaptivate the original matrix of our soul identity. I thought that was um, really such a beautiful chakra. And uh, I have a passage from Apostle Paul who counseled us. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. If we are able to let go of all sense of injustice and anger at the end of each day, each guilt about our own shortcomings, we will be on the road to better health, greater peace, and truer happiness. So at this time, I'll end with... Um, the violet flame and some prayer for the soul chakra. It's actually focusing on the forgiveness. So we want to see the violet light within the light of our soul chakra, which is bet between our navel and our belly. And we want to fill the violet light within our womb and turn the intense flame into violet. Just watch these flames neutralize the negative impact of all daily events. And this is really good to do before you go to bed, but we're going to um, express this now. So we're gonna focus our attention also on our heart and send love and forgiveness to all those we have wronged or who have wronged us and release these situations into God's hand. So we're seeing the purple light within our womb, going through our whole body from the root up to the crown, but focusing on the womb in our heart. The prayer of forgiveness for the soul chakra, second chakra. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear, setting men forever free with the wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour to all life in every place. I flood forth forgiving grace. And so be it. We give gratitude to St. Germain, the keeper over our planet, the violet flame. But we can transmute all desires and all hurts and wounds. And so it is. Place your hands on your heart. Where the spirit and spark of God lives within us.
Thank you all. Mm, thank you, Patricia. Um, yeah, it's interesting that um, when I was by the sea earlier doing the ceremony with Adam, um, the violet flame was really strong. So it's amazing you brought it up today. And I hadn't kind of connected things, but what I felt to release in the last few days, what was coming up was the many times I've dishonored my body and my sexuality and kind of said yes to things or whatever, mostly when I was young that I didn't really want to do. <laughs> but I kind of didn't have the, this is my temple and I can say yes or no to what's going to happen to it, confidence that I have now. So that's kind of what I wanted to let go of at the ceremony, because it's still kind of there in my aura in some way that um, that feminine dishonoring and, yeah, feeling that for all women, really, that there's this conditioning of, you know, having to please the masculine um, and... Uh, yeah, and the and the boundaries of that can get blurred quite easily, I guess. So anyway, um, so we're going to go into the neurographic art. Um, I don't think you've done it before, Sandra. Have you the neurographic art? Oh, you have. Okay, that's great. I don't know. Is the one? Good morning. Is the one that we did in the dreams arc? Or yeah. Uh, yeah, we did actually. So you probably have done it. Um, yeah, so what we do is, um, so just to say a little bit about neurographic art, it comes from Russia initially, and it's a way of doing art that actually works with the brain neural pathways and so it's actually a really powerful technique that you can apply to any kind of shadow and distressed state that you wish to and this particular practice was created by my friend Katrini who's a Jinkies ambassador in Russia um, and she shared it with me and I've kind of taken it and adapted it to various things that I do and I use it quite often you know um I'm not finding the need to use it right now but I had a really intense year last year where I was doing it every couple of days <laughs> sometimes you know just kind of getting my emotions out on paper and then doing this process and and it, it is um it's very easy and it's very powerful. Um, if you're someone who is about transmuting emotion, which I definitely am, then it, I find it a really useful tool. So we're going to begin with a blank piece of paper and um, uh, a, a dark pen. So that's a bit of a thin one. I'm going to go for quite a thick one um and what we're going to do is tune in to the 54th shadow which is called greed now you may have something already that springs to mind like chocolate or <laughs> um, something that you feel that kind of greed like you have to have it um, but what I was saying a bit earlier um, is I think there's a more subtle level of this. And I also see it playing out on a collective level where we kind of grab things out of a sort of survival fear is driving us. So we might see an opportunity to make some money or we might see an opportunity to get something Um seems like a good deal and so we're kind of like uh 
what's driving is almost like what I want you to tune into is the feeling that drives the, the need to grab something. And then, you know, if we take this, this, um, if we take this feeling on a bigger level, if we look at the way um, countries grab resources and um, land from other countries, like what is behind, it's like this feeling of it's ours, it's mine. And, and there's a feeling that you would use violence or you would use all kinds of quite nasty ways to ensure that you got this. So this feeling of greed is very constricting and narrow. Um, and then when we move into the gift of aspiration, it feels much more open. It's like rather than trying to grab something, we're trying to find the spiritual gift and we're more tuned in to like everyone blossoming together, sharing. Um, so in some ways it feels like this gene key describes the process that has led to colonization and oppression and all these things on our planet that are huge problems. Like this is the feeling and the greed behind it. That's an evolutionary current, but we're in a position now where we can rise into a much higher frequency of that. Um, so that's what we're taking up today as, <laughs> as Venus and the moon cross over this um, 54 line four point. It's a really special point in the I Ching as well, um, all around collective ascension. And Ra Uruhu, the founder of human design, said this was like one of the most important points in the entire zodiac for collective transformation. So um, it's a big one, really. Okay, so coming back now, what we want us to do is we're going to close our eyes and tune into a, a real greed feeling within us. It might be a more of a fear feeling, though, like the last time you had that I'm going to grab it feeling, like the the energy behind driving that. And then when we're ready, we're going to scribble it onto our page for about five seconds. Okay, so let's gather that feeling in. And then put it down on the paper. You could snarl a bit as well. Okay, so this is what my squiggle looks like. So the first thing you're going to look for is places where your squiggle ends in the middle of nowhere, like there and there on mine. And you're going to carry on these lines to the outer edge. So you can see that one there, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just take that line and continue it to the edge of my page. So we, we don't want any lines ending up in the middle of nowhere. So I've got another one there. I'm going to bring that round. So now I have no lines dangling in mid space, <laughs> basically. So what we're going to do now is find there's many wet places where these lines intersect, yeah? And um, it's quite nice, actually, how these lines have come out. But um, we're going to round off any lines that are spiky. So you can see here, this is creating a cross. So if I do this one here, I'll show you what I mean. And this 
part of the process is it's very soothing. You can kind of get lost in it. So there it is there. So I've rounded off that little shape there. And these should look something like brain synapses. So by the time you've rounded off all these spaces, there, 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 they're all over the place. They're going to look like little brain synapses um, rather than spiky interconnections. So does that make sense to everyone? Everyone happy to go with that? That's the example one there. And that, that one hasn't been done. So you can see it's still a sharp intersection and that one has been done. Okay. So I'll just pause the recording and we'll stay here for about 10 minutes and then I'll see um, how we're doing and carry on the next instruction. And just open the mic and speak to me at any time point obviously if you want to ask anything <laughs> okay so the next um the next step is to create some new neural pathway lines um but rather than doing the lines where first place our brain says to do them is we're going to do them in a different place. So my first line I, I wanted to do there, um, but my brain went, do it from there. So, but I've actually moved it. Um, oh, actually it's not, it was, I wanted to do it there, but I've done it there. So it's coming through and it's ending up there. And then there's another line. I wanted to do like that one in the corner, but I've started there actually, and it's coming out with this quite interesting line. Now, sometimes you might start to see something emerging in your picture, not always, but sometimes. And what I'm sort of perceiving here is a face, and there's a face here, and this is like a something some energy traveling out the eye and this is the back of the head there um so just look at your picture you might want to turn it around different ways um and and see which way starts to feel like the right way to work with it um and i'm going to do one more line and then i'm going to smooth them off again so i want to do a line there but I'm not. I'm going to start another line kind of over here. So there we go. I've just done another line ending down here. Okay. So as I say, I've now got some more spiky edges there, there, that these new lines have created. So we're just going to go back into smoothing those over for five minutes or so um, until they're all done. Okay, so I think I've done most of my smoothing off now um, and I'll probably come across some more as we go along. But what we're going to start doing now is adding some color to it. Now, in neurographic art, the instruction is to, um, to kind of fill blocks of color quite close to each other. So you can see like these little blocks here. So, um, so say you begin a block of purple, then put some other purple blocks nearby it. And if you start a block of yellow, put some yellow blocks nearby it. And you could make it a monochrome kind of thing, or you can use as many colors as you like, basically. Um, but just kind of breathe into it and get a sense of it. Um, you know, we've uh, we've just we've gone from the shadow of greed that and the gift of aspiration is these new lines. We've chosen where to put these new lines in. 
And now with the color, we're kind of bringing the whole thing to life. We're adding this positive feeling now to this um, aspiration that we don't have to be ruled by our fear. That's that's really what I get from this gift of aspiration. Okay, so um, the color bit is going to take quite a while. So... Um, Give us maybe half an hour for that to so come back at, um, yeah, five o'clock my time. So I'll reconnect with you at half five, but I'm here. So please feel free to ask any questions or whatever. I'd like to ask one. So the coloring is more to, uh, about the gift. And then when it's complete, it's the city. Yeah, the city, we usually will use like a gold pen or okay. something to add in that final ascension energy. Um, okay. Yeah. You do that after you do some coloring. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let's do the coloring first and then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm kind of part way through my colouring there, and I felt inspired to put a poem I've been writing on mine as well. So this is permission to do whatever you want, by the way, with these, because it's a creative process. Like, this is just for us, really. It's for your processing of your inner world. So I'm just going to give you the final piece of the neurographic art and then we'll carry on for about 15 minutes and then we can share at the end as well. Um, so the final bit is um, the city frequency. So you might have different materials that this makes sense to use for you, but um, one of the things I tend to use is these metallic um, pens that will kind of stand out as, as something a bit special. Um, so the acidic frequency of this um, gene key is ascension. So this is an intuitive process that we're going to do now that we're going to look for where we feel the most density lies in our picture. And we're going to create lines with the metallic pen or whatever you choose that draw that dense energy out towards an edge. So I, for me, when I tune into my picture, this here feels like quite a dense sort of energy. So I'll do, you might not be able to see it very well. In fact, I'm going to see if I can do it in silver so it shows up better. So I've maybe emphasized this a bit more than what I would have done if I'd just been on my own. But it's quite sweet, actually, because it's come out as a heart now there. And then I've created a line. Um, it's not terribly easy to see, but that is my line that is um, done with the metallic pen. So this is... If you think of it in a feeling way, you're drawing dense energy out and you're inviting it to the edges of your, your creation so that it can kind of dissipate that dense energy um, and invite in the quality, the acidic frequency of ascension. So any questions on that bit? Just um, maybe those listening, how many lines do we do with that? Maybe two, three? Yeah, two or three. Um, 
it depends like how many dense parts you perceive if you perceive like five dense parts in your painting then do five if you only perceive one dense place in your painting, then you might only need one. Um, and just to say as well, so I've got, I'm not necessarily going to use this, but you can use other materials like this is metallic gold shimmer spray. So you could like go <laughs> on your dense bit. Um, but I haven't got anything down in my room right now, so I'm not going to go for it. But um you know you could use potentially other things it's all about really what makes sense to you in the process um okay so it is it's just gone 5 30 my time um and come back in 15 minutes or if you finish before then maybe just go and have a cup of tea or whatever and we'll come back at quarter two and share what we've done So this recording is just for people on Soul Tribe. Um, so um, when you're sharing, be aware that other people may watch it, I guess, but not in the big, wide outside world, just in here. Um, does anyone want to go first? Just trying to... I'm trying to unpin myself. Oh, there we go. Oh, I like your shrine, Sandra. I've seen it for the first time. <laughs> oh, Pat, are you going to jump in? You're, you're muted. Did you want to start? No, you start. Okay. Oh, let's see. Maybe I need to turn out lights. Ah, it's always a problem for me. Can you see? Yeah, we can see it pretty good, actually. I can. Okay. So there's three humans on this paper. The one over here is my experience from zero to seven that I'm healing in this art. Um, I have the violet flame surround, or, surround it, and then it turns into two here as a couple, um, creating a relationship and communicating through the heart, unconditional love, and... Um, Healing the wound of the second chakra. Kind of bringing it, you know, um, let's see here. I can't see. What... And bringing it to the earth to be transmuted. Being open and communicative of it to help to release that and bring my power back. I'm sure you understand it, Allison. Yeah, I do. That feels really beautiful, actually. Um, well, I kind of took this from what happened this morning when I picked up my art pens. That uh, I wish to bring my father into this experience of the second chakra with the healing. Mm. And... Uh, I've created a new relationship here with two humans and speaking out about my womb to help others, staying in my power and grounding it and uh, using the violet flame. So I think that's pretty much what I have to share. Yeah, and it does feel like that whole the whole realm of relationships is all about the triggering and healing of these old wounds that come up. So the more we're able to, 
I mean, that's the whole Anana process is it almost like enables us to see the wound and go, okay, I'm reaching out to a wish giggle. I want to heal you. I want to listen. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I felt with the second chakra being feminine and other women who have experienced mm -hmm. what I have, how they're wounded and then they have problems in their second chakra or their first chakra, the root chakra, because their family coming in from the root into the womb, the bad experience they might have, then they develop, you know, problems in their um, reproductive relationships. And then it might continue into other relationships you've had, just mm. the whole abuse of a woman being abused within her womb mm. yeah. and bringing the healing to the collective. So beautiful i love thank it <laughs> i love it too thank you for bringing your healing to the collective <laughs> <laughs> collective ascension you yes yes yeah collective ascension thank you allison for <laughs> having us do this today mm. so beautiful <laughs> thank you so much for the prayer that you said for that you share first meditation and prayer mm. was so profound thank you so much <laughs> do you want to show us what you, your picture wow so much orange like <laughs> yes and it's about when I was doing, I was feeling like it's about freedom. Mm. Freedom to give me the, give me the freedom to live my life free <laughs> of the mind uh, chatter or the mind all thinking like the old patterns mm. live live free of subconscious patterns also yeah and i and i this looks like a bird or like a dog yeah i see that yeah That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. Get thing about like wanting inner freedom. You know, that's what is all about. This is about finding freedom from these things that either the minds kind of chatter and insecurity and and grasping all these like deep insecurities and wounds. Like if we can find freedom through the inner work, then the world will be free, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're beginning like right here. So <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that idea. Um, and also when you said about the greed read it and think about something that we like so much i think about fabrics because <laughs> I, I work with fabrics and i have so many fabrics that i know that i'm not going to use it but i i already let go during the pandemic a lot but i still have and i know i'm sure that i'm not going to use it but I like them and I hold them and but it is it's great because I and I want to be like more free and trust because that has to be with trust that the universe is always providing what we need. Mm. I don't know. 
something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think they're hanging on to stuff and the grasping feeling it is very connected to not trusting. Like if I let this go, will it, could I get it back again? You know, and yes, maybe yeah. I'm going to need it in two years. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, live just this moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, better some fabric though than like someone else's land, or you know, it could be worse, couldn't it? <laughs> it like feels like fabric is quite a small, small one compared to where some some people in the world are at. Anyway, <laughs> but it's the same feeling. Is the it's same... the same feeling? Yeah, okay. exactly. So, I think plugging into the feeling also helps us have empathy and compassion for people who are in the bigger thing mm -hmm. you know doing more problematic things we can see that they're actually are the same as us but they've just got a bigger <laughs> yes <laughs> oh dear anyway i'll share this quickly so um yeah so I wanted to sort of make it look like stained glass a bit. So I started with the blue and then I went into the greens and uh, and then I bought in orange and I thought, ah, there's that sacral chakra. And it has a kind of feeling of an energy coming in and then sort of dropping down. So um, I quite liked the sort of shapes and that in it and, then I was part way through and I decided I'd written this poem for Adam for Valentine's Day. So he hasn't heard it yet, but I'm going to share it with you guys. So I've done it on here so I can give this to him. Um, In the stillness of morning, the shape of my body cleaves perfectly to yours. The light on your eyelashes as you sleep and I am here in the secret place with you. The dream seems to journey across eternity, the touch of your skin so natural, the depth of your voice as you read to me bliss. Listening to the waves crashing on the shore at night, Venus and the moon, your breath as you sleep. My prayer is to remember, remember, Seed spinning, there is a force I feel that landed us right here, a feeling of finally coming home. You have been emblazoned on my soul forever. <laughs> it's signed, Duana, February 2024. <laughs> ah, so that's nice. Bring a bit of love and romance into the sacral chakra and uh yeah and and really this love's only possible through healing you know and i kind of feel that with all of us that wherever we get to in this life we've got a lot of healing to do with these old wounds and it's all what we're doing right now so I love you, Pat. And, oh, I love and, you too, Alice. <laughs> and the trust, the trust that you had watching you through your transmutation, you know, transformation through this relationship, you know, <laughs> to where you are now, from where you were. Yeah, the trust. <laughs> yeah, the trust when there's no trust. <laughs> you sure had it, though. But look at this. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 But it, it requires staying in trust all the time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Or at least as, long, as much as possible to create the right frequency to keep it going, really. Yeah. And I would think, you know, when two are uniting in that second chakra, first root chakra, that when you're in that, all the feelings that are positive and right, it only has to evolve it, you know, mm -hmm. when you think of it, you know, being in the yeah. right emotion at the time. Yeah. 
yeah it feels awesome. like a path of aspiration like to bring that sacral root energy like up into the heart and into mm -hmm. the transcendence of mm -hmm. love is just like really powerful tantra sex <laughs> It feels like I haven't had any lessons, but it feels like. But that's what I guess they, you know, it is. I haven't studied that, but I know it is a second chakra uh, tantra yoga. Yeah, it feels, too, it feels so. like the rising of the energy, purification yeah. of the energy. Bringing the kundalini from the root. Yeah. And having it unite and then ascend. <laughs> hey, anyway right. ladies enough of that for today so right. um yeah i'll see you both tomorrow in uh daily meditation if you're there and it's been lovely spending a few hours with you so thank you for coming you. <laughs> and playing with me <laughs> well thank you sandra <laughs> bye bye-bye